Hey everyone, Cody here, Cody here, Cody here. And today we're going to be doing a lines painting. Uh, I just realized I already have gloves on and it's because I painted a painting before this video. It turned out like garbage, so I'm not going to show it to you. Anyway, we're going to head over to the table and we're going to try to make a decent patriotic lines painting with red, white, and blue. So let's head over to the table and we'll get started. Okay, so as you can see, here's the tool we'll be using. We'll be using our edge painter here. Ooh, it's a little crusty. I didn't know it was that uh, the bristles were that stiff on it here. ASMR. Okay, anyway. All right, so we've got our colors here. We've got blue, we've got red and white. I've already got them stirred and ready to go. Um, now, the thing, and uh, let's talk about the surface we're using today. So this is not paper. This is actually uh, canvas paper. So it's not really paper. It's just canvas that's cut into sheets like paper. Uh, so you can see, uh, I'll try to zoom in or you know show you guys the, the difference with the colors, uh, but the backside is not gessoed. So it's just raw canvas. The front is gessoed. And uh, you can see that I already have some paint on it from the painting that I did before this that you don't get to see because it was terrible. Um, so I figured I'd just use it anyway. It's fine if we can't you know sell it or anything, we'll just use it. Uh, so yeah, we've got our canvas here. And then I've actually got a uh, canvas panel underneath. That's just to kind of keep it elevated off the table. And I've got some wax paper down because I already know it's going to make a mess. So I have the wax paper under the sheet so it doesn't make a huge mess. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and throw our colors on and we're going to put them into the lines and then we're going to pull that uh, little edge painter through those lines and, you know, try to make a, a decent looking painting. So we're going to put some thick bars of color first. Uh, I'm going to do some thick blue here and here and really kind of push that in. And then we'll just do some thin ones. I'll uh, do another one right below it. And then we'll do one right here. And we'll do one right at the bottom. And I really like this blue. It's like a darker blue. Uh, I'm a big fan of, of darker shades of colors um, as opposed to like really light vibrant versions. I, I like the darker versions. I don't know why, it's just my preference. All right, so then we'll move on to this red. And again, kind of a darker red. And actually this one's a little thinned out. I think I'd add some water to this red because it's, it's very thin. And so we're gonna lay this out here again in stripes and we're going with the direction that we're gonna be painting the painting. So that's why we're kind of going from left to right here and really add some red. We'll do red at the top here and one right above it. And you know what, let's go ahead and do another one right above that. All right, so we've got that. And then now we will move on to our white. We're gonna put kind of a big strip here. The reason why is because the white really gets absorbed in these types of paintings. Uh, so we wanna kind of have like a, a wide area of it so that it really pops because once it kind of gets mixed in with some of these other colors, you really don't see much of it. Uh, so we're gonna try to have some little distinct areas where it's, it's you know, the white is very prevalent. And so we're actually gonna do a couple of thin strips here right next to it, maybe a red right in between these, and then another one right there. And we'll go ahead and do that right there. And we'll, we're just gonna kind of fill in some of these gaps here so that uh, when we paint it, um, you know, it, it doesn't, um, so the paint fills the whole painting essentially. And I think that's good. We got some pretty good coverage. It'll, it'll kind of flatten out as we go. And now that's it. So now we kind of move into making the actual painting and we're gonna use our edge painter here. And as always, we're gonna kind of pull some of the paint from the edge onto the canvas to kind of fill the space. So I'm gonna pull that on and then we're gonna pull this bad boy through, trying to keep it relatively uh, straight, although I don't know how well that's gonna work. Okay, so we've got a good kind of coat here. The problem that we have here is this little gap. Um, there's, there's canvas showing up. So what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna try to pull some of this paint up here and we're gonna pull some from the edge and we're gonna go over it one more time. I don't like to go over them more than once, but to try to fill it 
while this thing is sliding around. This wax paper, uh, this wax paper is kind of a double-edged sword apparently because it's going to keep it cleaner, but Okay, now we've got a, a decent hole through. So now we're gonna do our next layer. We're gonna overlap a little bit. Okay. Now this layer kind of looks like that layer um, only because I pushed the same, I pushed down as hard. If we don't push as hard, well, actually it's coming up about the same. And we'll do our last layer here. Okay, so we, the painting is not bad. It's actually kind of nice to look at because it's it's like the same pattern all the way down. So it's very pleasing to the eye. However, we have a couple of issues here. We've got this gap here in paint. Um, we've got a gap up at the top right here. So we're gonna fill these in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in, we're gonna fill these in, okay? And we're gonna fill this in right here and this right here. And then we're gonna go over it one more time. Now, unfortunately, I don't like going over them more than once because sometimes it mixes those paints and you lose the colors, but I really want to get rid of some of that, those parts that didn't get paint. So I'll pull that through. Okay, and we actually got a little bit of stacking going on, so that's kind of cool. And then this was kind of the other part right here, so I'm just gonna try to, no. All right, so I'm gonna pick up some of this paint right here, and we're gonna try to use this paint to kind of break up this middle section here. And done. So, uh, overall, not too bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this glove off so I can show you guys. Oh, and we've got a little bit of pooling here, unfortunately. That's, I, I'm not a big fan of the pooling. That's what's happening here. It's cause it got lifted, so the paint started pulling in. It's okay, it's fine. Um, Overall, not a bad piece. So we've got our, our lines as normal. We've got our thin lines and uh, a little bit of distortion over on this side. Now, I'm okay with a little bit. It kind of gives it some character. Usually on the left too, because I pull left to right. So I kind of adjust the, um, the weight. So how heavy I'm pushing down on it, I kind of adjust as I'm going. So a lot of times what I'll find is that like up here, how I'll start off kind of just barely pushing down and then push harder as I go. Um, it's not that I necessarily mean to, I just find myself doing it. And so this is why you'll you'll have this right here, this distortion, uh, where I kind of skipped over it and then pushed down harder and then let off. So you see these layers underneath because I didn't push as hard on the edges. Um, now again, it's kind of cool and it gives it a little bit of character. So it's not like a perfect painting where it's just perfect lines. Uh, it does have a little bit of flaws and it has a little bit of character. However, um, you know, overall, we've got these the thin lines that we always try to get with these types of paintings. Um, and you can see they're just, it's just really nice to look at. I, I really enjoy these paintings just for the fact that they're, they're very calming to look at uh, because of the patterns. And I think a lot of us kind of like these patterns. And, you know, honestly, like this, you know, if you had a painting that was kind of hanging like this, it would draw your eyes down. Another thing that I like is the little bubbles that are kind of popping up. You can see 
uh, some of the white pulling through. That's one of the things I like about the gloss enamel is that because it's like a high gloss house paint, uh, sometimes it creates the cells automatically. I don't add any chemicals to the paint. Sometimes I'll thin it down with just a little bit of water, but no chemicals. And uh, you'll get these cells where it pops. And you'll just usually see this a lot on the paints where I use gold or silver because that metallic is a different uh, type of paint than the gloss enamel itself. Uh, but overall, you know, oh here here's a little bit more of it so the cells are kind of breaking apart and, and that kind of happens as the air bubbles that are trapped in there just kind of pop and it, again i like it it gives it a little bit of character so overall uh not a bad painting i actually don't uh hate this one it's not as vibrant as some of the other ones we've done and i'm thinking about doing a similar painting but instead of using the edge painter we're going to use an actual paintbrush and we're going to put some thicker bars and see if we can make like a a different painting like the same kind of painting but with some thicker bars and a little bit of more vibrant color so we'll see how that goes uh but that's it for the video guys i hope you enjoyed if you did uh let me know like it subscribe all that cool stuff if not that's cool too i completely understand but hope you enjoyed i will see you in the next one take care god bless and see you then bye guys